Hi, I'm Dave Lawrence from the California Type Foundry. And I am showing you how to draw and to make something look really nice and printed. I've had a lot of good results from my clients. Oh, okay, and when I'm using the quick tool, notice here that, notice that when I, I'm pushing shift, it changes to the smooth curve. Okay, so this one, I just wanna give something that has it a little bit more under control and then put it down here. Okay, and then I'm um, to see how I'm doing things mostly in curves because that's how I want this to look. I want this to look nice, except for the serif tips, I'm doing those not in curves. And this part, I'm actually not gonna do in curves either. This one you wanna to try to get at your line. Okay, almost done here. And then we're gonna be sort of fixing this up. Okay, it's a good idea to sort of plan nodes a little bit. Uh, this one, I did not plan my nodes so well. Okay, so let me just adjust some of the curves here. What I like to do is a global harmonize and that gets everything a lot smoother so I can sort of see what things are wrong. This guy was supposed to be more of a curve. Okay, so I use option to make it. I like to do for these diagonal nodes, I like to use option so that each way it's the same. Especially the, the diagonal nodes that are more close to 45 or so. Okay, this guy's a little bit off. So we I hold down C because that's power nudge. That helps. See, when I hold down C and I move these things up, everything is sort of moving up with him. Okay, this we don't need. Um, I don't think. And then what I've sort of found when I was doing this before is that the the F serifs are just too big here. Okay, and then this is a little bit in the wrong spot. I put that in a little bit in the wrong spot. These are okay down here because, and, and we don't need both of them. So what I do is I pull this up by holding shift to keep the angle the same, and then I pull that there. This can be also a little bit up because just F had a much thicker, uh, this line was a lot thicker than on the E. So I wanna get that closer if we look at the original. So you look at the, how thick this is on the F compared to the E. So there's some things that you wanna take into account. This one, maybe he had carved this out first. So maybe that's why everything just looks thicker here than on a letter like this one. But I, I like this look more, so I'm going to make the F match this. So that's just part of figuring out what you wanna choose when you are doing something that has a lot of different uh, options, a lot of different ways of drawing the same letter. So a lot of these historical ones, even if it's just a uh, type that hasn't been carved after, is going to look different a lot of times. Okay, this one just feels like, see how he's has that weird... I don't like these bulges. That is noticeable when you're farther out. It's, it's very subtle, but it's noticeable. Okay, so that's going to look better. So if we look at that here, now we need to sort of extend it out to get this curve. So you sort of extend this one here. Then I'm going to harmonize that. And then I and see how this is just bulges super right there. That's why it almost looks like it's not a curve. Well, it's, it almost looks like a sharp point just because of how that's going there. So if I want to make that look more curvy, then I go and add it like that. Now it's nice. So the way that I'm conceptualizing this, I'm not I'm not just thinking about the nodes when I'm doing this. I am trying to think about, I am, I'm trying to do sort of the same process that he did. Okay, so I have this piece of type and now I'm going to carve it. I'm going to smooth and sand things down and smooth it out. And what would it look like if I'm smoothing this thing out? Okay, so this is at the wrong angle here. So if I get at the better angle, and then to get this, see how this part's up here? To get that part down is actually to pull this one closer. Okay, 
So I'm trying to, I'm thinking about how do I make this nice counter and smooth it out? So I love this counter here. I do not like the bottom part of it. So we're gonna work on that next. And see that a lot of that is because of this thing right there. So I pull that down. This guy is actually, at, he's actually, since he's darker, he's actually straight. So now pull that out. Now watch the difference. Okay, see, it's looking better. Oh, that looks like a little bit bulgier there than I want. Uh, I have to think about whether, say, so I'm thinking of moving this guy back. He's only over by that much. So see if I move him over a little bit more, that's got a nice, nicer look to it. Okay, this part is not looking good, but we saw that this part was a little bit too thick. So I think in my final version, I made this at something like a 14. And then this node is in the sort of the wrong spot. See, if if you are, so I call the, this part the fuzz of when you're, when you have a picture <clears throat> and you're drawing it and you're sort of tracing it and trying to get it right. You sort of have this fuzzy part here. This is the fuzz and it allows you sort of to sort of cheat in both directions, but you have to make sure if you pull this part this much off of the fuzz, then you put, pull the other parts off of the fuzz to still make it retain the same shape. If I pull it off of the fuzz differently for different parts, then the shape is going to be pretty different. It's not going to be like the original, which I'm trying to get it look pretty much like the original because this is our origin series. Okay, then this part I am going to pull into here. And then this part, see, he's not in the fuzz. He's not the right part of the fuzz. So I don't want that. Um, and then pull this closer. Okay, the reason why, even though I'm pulling this closer, it's still looking like that and it's still separated is because I think that this thing is too long here. So let's actually, it might be the angle. Okay. Now we can pull it back a little bit. See, now I have a nicer curve right there. Okay, this is too much. I'm going to sort of option, pull him down. And then we're going to start adding curves to the tips of the serifs here. And like I was saying in the last video, I like to keep these. It's nice to keep a sharp curve if it doesn't matter. Because one, I like the look of it when it sort of looks like this. And the other thing is that the, what, what, what is it about it? The, the curve, it's, it's just easier to control the other side of the curve. If this was a smooth node, oh man, it gets really hard. I've tried that way before. I've done that with uh, Bodoni Terracina and that is way hard to control. Okay, you see how this is bulging there? That is because it's, it's not following the rule the rule is that these things are not supposed to cross, these handles. So if I put this here, you can see how it messes it up on the curve because now I have an inflection right here and now this thing is bulging out. So the way you get rid of that is make it, move it far enough so that if I extend this handle, see it's going right through it or it's a little bit to the left of it. And then I can help that a little bit better by pulling this to the right and then harmonize this part and that smooths that, see? It's still looking too sharp, and that's because of the couple reasons that I showed you before. One is that these nodes are not long enough. This is not pulled out enough. Um, and then, let's see, I'm just gonna go, okay, one, oh, 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 I am not using what other things I usually do when I do this. I like to turn my fill when I'm tracing things like this, and you'll see that my trace is gonna be all messed up once I do this. I heavily customize these things. I like to turn the glyph fill down to about zero. Actually, let's turn it all the way to zero. Now you can see the thing that you're tracing even better. So that fill, it's sometimes better for different situations. Okay, let's see. So that's looking pretty good right there. So that's looking smooth like we want to. Only this tip is a little bit off. The, the tip, I don't like to, I like to try to make things that are closer to 90 degrees. Uh, when, you, when the tip, I don't like things like this. To me, this is ugly when you put something that's a lot less than 90 degrees. The 
thing where things should connect should be nine degrees. And then what this does is what I'm doing here, this not only sort of softens, makes it rounder, it's also softening this curve here. See, it's making it a lot greater than 90 degrees, so it's softening that. This one, so this one we can make, you know, we might want to make this one straight by holding shift and this one straight up and down like that and then move him closer to get a better angle here. Okay, so then that's his tip. Okay, see how nice he's looking? And then you can also see up here, these are all subtle moves. This is, a, you wouldn't want to try to do this thing would be less practical if this was a text font or something. Although I'm sort of impractical because I just like things the way I like them. So I would, I might do it for a text font even, but usually you're not going to want to do that. Okay, look, we're, we're smoothing out this curve. I'm thinking about this like I'm sanding away this extra junk that was up here. And now it's starting to look more smooth. It still looks a little bulgy right there. So I want to fix that by pulling this out a little more, jiggling it around. Actually going this way more would help it. That means that he needs to go closer. Okay, so that's looking a little weird. Part of it is I need to harmonize him to get him closer so that way it doesn't look like that. And this one can be pulled away to try to get that closer connected. Okay, it's still not the smoothest, but that's looking a lot better. And now we're pulling these out here. One thing that I learned from Bodoni when I was doing his fonts is that he thinks of each, since he's carving each letter individually, he thinks of each letter like it's a work of art. It's like you're just... So the way that he his stuff looks so good, his displays and stuff look so good, is he just thinks about this one letter. I'm going to make this letter look really good. Then I'm going to make the next letter look really good. And he's doing a lot more of thinking about the individual letter than just thinking about the all strokes are even and all that sort of thing, like using the... So a lot of things... Uh, Today, a lot of things are using that computerized look that, for me, that just doesn't look as good with printing. Um, and a lot of my stuff has been printing. A lot of the stuff that I've done has been for print. Um, and also, I'm trying to make my stuff sort of future-proof. Once you have things looking like rectangles and stuff, well, people may not... once screen resolution gets bigger, better and better. And once screens get bigger and bigger, like when they get the TV wall screens and all that stuff, then they, we want, we, they might want stuff to look a little bit more interesting and high resolution and like this. So I'm trying to make my stuff a little bit more future proof by having it look a little bit better. And if we sort of compare to um well at the end we're going to compare this to sort of how if you were to draw this we're going to compare this to monotype centaur and just see what's the difference if you were to come draw this using that sort of thing okay there's actually 18 here so this is too thick okay so that is about how i would do this for the first draft and then we might modify as we're balancing everything then he's going to change later Okay, I'm going to save that, and I'll see you in the next video. We're going to do the R, and the R is one of my favorite on this uh, of these capital letters.